Check one, check two, and check three. There it is. We've got the red light. What's going on, everybody? Andrew Wall here. We are getting started with some more pro YouTube training. It's not just YouTube today, though. We've got people asking questions about Twitch, about Mixer, social media as well. It's not just your YouTube game. It's your game on all of your avenues. I'm here to help. My name is Andrew Wall. I co-founded the number one gaming network on YouTube. I've grown YouTube channels from tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands to millions of subscribers. And I've produced over 5,000 videos on YouTube that got over a billion views. And I'm here to help all of you guys grow your channel, grow your online business. That's what this is all about. And I'm going live more often than ever. Uh, starting this week. I'm doing three live streams this week to help you guys out because I want more interaction in chat. Um, I want these live streams to more be more than just a once a week thing where I uh, deliver to my patrons uh, many channel reviews. I want it to be more about uh, helping everyone. Uh, even if people uh, have, have yet to become my patron, um, I want to be able to help you guys in chat more. Reggie set goes in chat already. Good to see you. And today we're going to kick off the live stream um, with a, another mini channel review for one of my new patrons. His name is Clash Bashing, a very uh, successful YouTuber so far uh, with 123,000 subscribers, 1.5 million views per month. He's doing very, very well. And so when I start reviewing channels that are larger like this, uh, who are my patrons, they uh, require different types of advice. Generally, that advice uh, tends to be a little bit more high-level advice, high-level strategy advice, because they're doing a lot of the tactical things well. So Clash Bashing, this is your first mini-channel review, and then we'll follow up and do a bunch more uh, working together uh, over time. So I really appreciate you becoming my patron. So here is the man himself, Clash Bashing, with two exclamation points in his channel name. Very good. Good stuff. And Clash Bashing, like I mentioned a moment ago, is doing well. Average views per video is hovering somewhere around 25K, something like that. 20, 25K per video. Um, and overall, he's doing a lot of things very, very well. And that's what has generated the success for this particular channel. However, obviously, everybody has room for improvement. And this channel absolutely does as well. Rono, good to see you. Shadow Fight, welcome in chat. Anybody joining in chat can ask me questions at any time. I'm going to do more to interact with you guys live as much as humanly possible. So Clash Bashing, let's get into this channel review. First things first, let's take a look at the Social Blade numbers. Clash Bashing, like I mentioned a moment ago, 123,000 subscribers, but it is very important to see how the channel's been trending. This is an ancient game. Clash of Clans has been around for a very, very long time, and look at this. Been growing non-stop since 2016, 62,000 views here, a big spike here, 1.8 million, uh, but then just steadily growing over time. 700k, uh, 900k, 900k, 1.4 million, 1.52 million. This channel has been growing a lot, and there's a lot of reasons why this channel has been growing. It's not just luck, or just because he started covering a game that was popular. Clash is Clash of Clans is not a new game at all. And so everybody out there that thinks, well, there's so many channels covering this game, where there's so many uh, people I can't break through. That is absolutely not true. This is a case where uh, this man was just grinding. Rocky was grinding and grinding and grinding, and eventually that paid off when they started having some of the right attributes in their content to make it take off. I'm going to talk about what those attributes are, and I'm going to reinforce that to you, Clash Bashing, to ensure that you continue to focus on those items that I think are currently generating success, perhaps doubling down on those. TC1 C3, T1 C3, great to see you in chat as well. Um, big Fortnite channels is the question. Yeah, we can talk about Fortnite channels later. I made an entire video on my channel about Fortnite channels specifically and the opportunity to grow in Fortnite. Um, in Fortnite, of the five content values, which I'll just go ahead and explain those right now, um, the five content values are uh, new content, make, making something that is the best, making something that is unique, making something that is a challenge, or teaching people through something through learning content. And in a trend like uh, Fortnite, for example, that is highly competitive, and in a trend like 
uh, Clash of Clans, which is highly competitive, uh, generally there are going to be players out there that are absolutely the best. So best is off the table. So that only leaves four things left for you. And then a lot of people say, well, my personality isn't that great. So I can't really grow my channel through my personality. Maybe your personality isn't that great. Seriously, that's okay. Maybe you're not the most entertaining person. So maybe unique is off the table. But that still leaves for everybody else challenge and adversity content. That leaves learning content. Um, and, you know, <laughs> I feel like there's so much on the table for all of you guys to grow on YouTube um, that you can also, if your personality isn't that great, you can grind and just do new and trending content. Talking about what's new, speculating what's coming up, taking every little nugget of information and using that to cover the new value. So no matter what, with any game, mature games generally best and unique are kind of off the table or they're more difficult to hit because the most hilarious guys with the best players are already covering that game. But those three other types of value are absolutely on the table for any game. Clash of Clans, uh, Fortnite, etc. I'm talking about challenge, I'm talking about learning, and I'm talking about new are on the table. And if you look at the content here from Clash Bashing, uh, that's a, some of the area of opportunity that Clash Bashing has been focusing on that has grown their channel, despite the fact that other players may be better or may be more hilarious, etc. So, awesome. Um, beautiful. West East Bay, welcome to chat. It's great to see you as well. So, that was some of the context that I'm going to be delivering around Clash Bashing's channel review. So, that's the performance. So, let's talk about Clash of Clans. And this goes for anybody else that's looking at trends on the internet. Go to Google Trends, uh, go ahead and select Worldwide or United States, and go ahead and drop it down by YouTube search. You know, and when I'm giving advice to a channel that's already getting 1.5 million views per month, you need to look at your overarching strategy and look at you've already made the midterm race happen effectively. Uh, that's where they, oops, take a look at the charts. There you go. You've already done well in the midterm on your channel. You need to be looking at the long term now. So long term, can Clash Bashing cover Clash of Clans forever? You covering content on your channel, can you cover your topic forever? And the answer is almost always no. You can't be a single topic channel because you will die as that channel's topic. Hey, what's up, old Ultra A rated? Hey, good to see you. A little late, gonna come back and rewatch later. Sounds great, thanks for stopping by the stream. Be sure to give this thing a thumbs up if you're enjoying the streams. I'm gonna be doing three this week. Uh, what's up, good to see you. Clash Bashing's channel review, yes indeed. So, can Clash Bashing cover Clash of Clans forever? Well, let's take a look at how Clash of Clans is trending, of course. And if you look at, since the beginning of this year, right here, Clash of Clans was at a 43 on Google Trends. It's a relative uh, score. And then by the end of the year, it was at a 18. So what that means is roughly half of the interest of this time last year in this game on YouTube, it is literally halved. It's 50% of the audience and the interest is gone. So that means that Clash of Clans is not going to necessarily be the best long-term trend for you. And if we take a look at the very long term with this trend, can Clash of Clans glow, grow channels long, 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 long term? Clash of Clans is the blue line. It peaked back in 2015, friends, and it has been steadily declining ever since. That's okay. It's still a big trend. It's still clearly a trend that can grow channels. As you see here, we've got this channel trending up while the overall trend is going down. So there's still opportunity to capture audience as the big YouTubers abandon trends like this as they're declining and they go to things like Fortnite, like you said a moment ago in chat. But can you count on Clash of Clans to carry your channel in the long term? Oops, that was a sneak preview of my next idea. And the answer to that question is no. So you need to Clash Bashing Start working towards diversification of your content on your channel because you will die a Clash of Clans channel. And I think you know it. Sip of coffee time. Who all's in chat who hasn't spoken up yet? It's good to see you. Gimlin, good to see you. You love the value you bring in your videos. Thank you for coming by live. I really appreciate it. Brawl isn't that popular yet. No, it's not. We're going to talk about that. So Shadow Shido Fight knows the deal there. So here's, here's what's up. Here's an idea. Clash bashing. I've done this before on TGN channels, TGN Squadron in particular, 
where you're covering one game with a particular developer. So in your case, you've got Clash of Clans. And the developer, of course, is Supercell. Supercell, arguably one of the most, if not the most, prolific mobile game designer in terms of creating games that get super popular on YouTube. A pivot option for you or an expansion option for you is to be more or less a Supercell games channel. They make games in multiple genres. They've proven to make games that are popular. They have fat marketing budgets and they are a high quality developer. They're more or less, in my opinion, the Blizzard entertainment of mobile games. That's a huge compliment because I think Blizzard is the best game developer in the world. Them and Nintendo, probably. So this is an opportunity for you to become a Supercell Games channel. So that's why I've put all of these Supercell trends here because uh, this is an opportunity for you to look at diversifying even today. Look at Clash Royale. And this is, goes for everybody else covering any topic. Look at the surrounding topics, maybe even within... Um, a single publisher or media company or IP company that's created content or created a new IP um, or created an IP, look at their surrounding IPs, look at their other properties. Can you create a channel covering multiple of their properties as a way to expand out of one of their properties? The answer to that question could be, yeah. The most popular Clash game out right there right now, of course, is Clash Royale. Now, Clash Royale, this red line, has been declining over time because it's not necessarily super hot right now, but it is more popular than Clash of Clans, and it will be popular for a long time. Etika! Oh my god, it's Etika! It's Etika! It's the actual Etika! What's up, dude? It's good to see you, Etika. I was checking out your uh, event coverage recently and your reactions to those uh, them their Nintendo reactions. Hilarious. It's good to see you, man. It's good to see you. Next time I'm in New York, Etika, let's go out to have another lunch where I clear out the restaurant again like a mob boss. It's just you and me sitting alone in a restaurant again. Cool? On Valentine's Day again? You want to do it? Etika Gaming in chat, everybody. Celebrity Nintendo bad boy Etika Gaming in chat. So this also goes for Etika. But Etika's already done this. You know what? You showed up at just the right time, Etika. EW Network. Whatever you want to call yourself now. Etika Gaming. Let me pull up his channel. You're actually a perfect example of what I'm talking about. This is a channel that has expanded into, and a YouTuber that has expanded into, a very successful YouTuber, that has expanded into Nintendo games. That's his thing. He's the Nintendo bad boy. And so, just like I'm suggesting that you consider Clash Bashing expanding it into being a Supercell games channel, because multiple Supercell games over time have shown to be popular and have shown to... Uh, basically uh, be viable. This means that this developer knows what they're doing. Etika has become a channel where you can rely on kind of darker or more hilarious or more personality-based Nintendo content over time. And in the very, very beginning of his channel, it wasn't always this wide in terms of the number of topics that he's covering, necessarily. But over time, he realized that being Nintendo as the overarching developer and covering that is a path to success for him. I know it is so romantic. Etika is so romantic. So anyway, that's what he did and it worked for him. So now anything that Nintendo does, one of the best developers and publishers in the entire world, he can react to it. And he's got a unique angle where he can be darker about it. He can be funnier about it. He can be edgier about it. And he can grow beyond just being a Smash channel or just being a one game channel, etc. Even though Smash is the hot thing that he's covering right now. Perfect example, I will link EW Network's channel in chat here, so you guys can check that out. Perfect example of choosing a developer or publisher and covering multiple titles around that developer or publisher. By the way, if you guys have any questions, uh, be sure to throw them into chat. So, cool. So this is my number one recommendation to you, is considering expanding beyond just Clash of Clans and moving into expanding into Clash Royale in the short term, and then of course, considering expanding into Brawl Stars, the next big title for this company. As you can see, they, have, they aren't displaying Brawl Stars here on the website because it needs some work. But once they fix that game, the last two games they've released, big games they've released have been mega hits, and it could be a way for you to expand Clash Bashing, okay? Supercell Games. It's the, it's the 
easiest way for you to grow outside of being a one-trick pony like you are right now. Now, you might also consider, well, how about all those Clash of Clans ripoffs? They're so good. How about Lords Mobile, available right now? How about Clash Castle Clash? How about Clash of Kings? How about Clash of Bash? How about Bash of Clash of Clash of Clash? I don't recommend, and the numbers support my argument, I do not recommend anybody expand their channel from a good game by a good developer into the crappy ripoffs of that good game by a good developer. You should invest your time into a good developer and publisher, not into all the garbage that is around that good developer and publisher. And so if we take a look at the, the numbers here, Clash of Clans is the blue line. Here are the top competitors on YouTube to Clash of Clans. I'm looking at my second monitor here. And the biggest one right now on YouTube is Lords Mobile, and it's one-tenth of the audience size on YouTube. So, not so good. East West Bay, can you check out mine if I get a chance? It's called East West Bay, your channel? Sure. Can you ask me specific questions about your channel? That would be really, really helpful. And uh, JHC Gaming, if he's here in chat, then feel free to ask me questions as well. Dar Sizzle Offshore's in chat. Dar Sizzle Offshore. Dar Sizzle Offshore, if you guys aren't already familiar, is a badass outdoors channel. She's so amazing. She's catching fish all day out on her boat. I love Dar Sizzle Offshore. Tearing Florida up. Dar Sizzle Offshore, everybody. Great channel. Okay, so that's the deal. So don't focus on ripoffs around something great and something quality when you're growing your channel, everyone, and clash bashing. Focus on the company behind it. And in this case, it's Supercell. I think I've made myself clear. Expand into being a Supercell channel. That is a no-brainer opportunity for you Clash Bashing. You've got 123,000 subscribers and 1.5 million views per month. It's time for you to move from the midterm to the long-term strategy. Yes, indeed. Excellent. So, let's move on to the next concept. What is it that you are doing so well that maybe you should keep doing and not screw up and stop doing it? By the way, Dar Sizzle Offshore, Etika, if you guys have any questions, drop them in chat as well. I'm making these a lot more um, a lot more interactive than I have in the past. I'm doing multiple live streams this week to help out all YouTubers. So here's the deal. Here's what you're doing well. The reason why this channel is growing is what I talked about earlier. Delivering, let me zoom in for you, delivering clear value through every single video. And this is being very effectively done through these thumbnails and through these titles even more effectively than somebody like Echo Gaming. So Echo Gaming, this isn't a bash on you. You know, eh, bash, clash bashing. It's not a bash on you. The reason why clash bashing is bigger than you is clash bashing is better than you at delivering clear value through titles and thumbnails and structuring their programming strategy in a way that is clearly delivering one of those five things I talked about before. New, best, unique, learning, or challenge. Let's just browse his thumbnails. Remember, Clash Bashing, you should continue to focus on those five things. You're already doing that in nearly every piece of content. Double down on it and combine multiple of them in the same video to get more views. Insider information. You are my patron and you are my insider patron. So there you go. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, where's the value in this? Completing the Sorcerer's Storm. It's a let's play. Yeah, but you know why it was why this video is interesting? Because it was so easy. You're communicating that this is per perhaps you're going to be showing the audience a time saver, and perhaps they're going to be learning uh, something in this video. Not to mention you're completing this challenge essentially. So you brought them a challenge and learning value in this video. Cool. Here's a great example. Best attacks, arrow, and then a nice eye-catching, uh, powerful character from the game. Insert character here, right? The new Electro Dragon attacks. You're doing so well here. Plus, this is Star Wars strategies. Oh, 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 I love it. You have best and you have new as your values that you're communicating in this video right here. Combining two values into one video, increasing your views significantly. This could just be a video saying TH12 three-star strategies. Okay, it's a learning video. 
maybe there's a little bit of best in there because it's three star. No, you're saying it's the best attacks in a new dragon attack, and it's a strategy you're also going to learn. You're combining multiple kinds of value into a single video, and it's growing your channel. Good job. Keep doing that. Keep focusing on that. I don't know if you knew that's exactly what you were doing when you put best and new and learning all in one video at the same time, but it, that's why your channel is growing. That specific strategy that you're using is why a channel is growing. Um, Reggie Set Go, you're asking about your perfume channel. I will answer your question here in just a minute. Let me uh, finish up this channel review. We'll get right to it. War of Stars? Does it say Star Wars? Star War Strategies. I don't know. It's not Star Wars. So anyway, you're doing that very, very well. So one thing that you're also doing well that you should continue doing is diversifying your revenue, just like here on Patreon. You've got 23 patrons, but here's what's interesting about your Patreon is you are offering strategic help and um, consulting to people to help them with Clash. This is so brilliant because people that play Clash, there's a lot of whales out there, as you know, have a lot of money. There are people in their mid-30s and 40s that have real jobs and have money and their dads and they want to be better at this game. The fact that you're, you're, you're essentially running a consulting model to consult with people and help them one-on-one -on -one is brilliant. Continue to do this and continue to target um, those people with a lot of money that want to be good at mobile games. Coaching people to be better at video games is a real business opportunity. And you can use your expertise as a baller player in this game to grow your revenue significantly to get more of these $50 and $100 patrons. Don't take this for granted. Double down on that. People that play Clash of Clans and played for years have dropped hundreds of dollars on average. Paying you 50 bucks to get a little bit better? Easy. So, that leads me into a suggestion for your content on your channel. Focus more on easy learning videos and use those easy learning videos to solicit more people to join your basically consulting business that you're running here on Patreon. So what I mean by that is top three X, your top three best you know, top three tips to win such and such. The best attacks for XYZ. The best strategies for da 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 da. How to build the best base for blah blah blah. And making shorter videos that aren't all gameplay, like all of your videos are gameplay, right? You talk about a concept and then you run gameplay after that. Do shorter consolidated learning videos and then solicit people to join your Patreon at the end of those learning videos if they want one-on-one -on -one advice, kind of like I do on my channel. You can make a lot of money doing that, and you can help a lot of people do what they love better. Cool? Sweet. All right. If you guys are enjoying the stream, let me know in chat, and be sure to drop your specific questions about your channel in chat. I'm here to help. This is all interactive. This is all to help you guys. I am helping one of my patrons first, of course, because they are supporting me. Uh, through Patreon, and they are one of my insider patrons. Beautiful. So that's a suggestion for you. Another couple quick suggestions, and we will be um, we'll be moving along. But right here on your Twitter account, on Clash Bashing Twitter, um, you are embedding YouTube videos. Don't do that unless it's a live stream. Take clips from your witch slap the ba these bases, and what have you. Take a clip of this video and then release it on your Twitter natively. So I'll keep telling all of you guys to do this because so many people just do it so poorly. And I need to start getting my video game back up and running again. I was doing it daily. Embed your videos into Twitter like this. I've got a video on my channel to teach you how to embed your videos. Embed them into Twitter like this by actually uploading them to Twitter. You get a title, you get a description, you get a thumbnail, you then click and it takes you to the full video on actual YouTube. You should be doing this clash bashing. You are a pro. Your, your channel is growing. You deliver a really good message at the beginning of your videos in the first two minutes. Clip out the first two minutes of your video and release that content on Twitter instead of forcing people to look at a terrible YouTube link that will not get any exposure. Beautiful. Now here's, the, uh, here's another thing to consider. Clash bashing. Your Twitch avenue, you could consider running a Twitch to YouTube strategy. So what I mean by that is Almost all, all of your content on your channel is all gameplay content. It's you saying some kind of concept at the beginning. This was the hardest blah, blah, blah I've ever done. And then you just playing the game after that for like 15 to 30 minutes. Why not do that live on Twitch and make Twitch revenue while you're doing that? 
and then do tactical commentary while you're playing the game and what have you, and then upload those as highlights to your YouTube channel. Why not do that? Are you recording these as VODs? and not being live every time you record, you should be live every single time you record. Maybe you are, maybe I'm missing that point. But if you are not live every time you're recording this gameplay content, go live, record it live, if you will. Double your yield on it. Everybody can join you live, you can get sponsors, you can get bits, you can get the whole nine on Twitch. And then cut the highlights and make those your videos on YouTube. That's a better strategy. It will save you time and you'll get more yield out of your limited time as a dad. Cool. The other thing you're doing very well is diversifying your revenue by using Amazon affiliate through your Twitch avenue. Oh, so beautiful. Mwah. Amazon affiliate is so beautiful. And I've got something to tell you guys after this channel review. I worked about 14 hours so far on the ultimate creator gear guide. And a bunch of the gear that you have here on your affiliate is the gear I'm recommending. Amazon affiliate is fantastic. If you know what you're talking about and you're trustworthy, running affiliate revenue strategies like this is so smart. Keep the revenue diversification going. Final item for clash bashing. Final item. And I want to hear from chat before I share my opinion. If clash bashing, like we talked about earlier, is going to expand their channel into beyond clash, they're going to need to change the name of their channel from clash bashing. Right? Because Clash Bashing is only Clash. So, their community is called Bash Nation. They can't be Clash Bashing. So, the two elements here, they, he introduces himself as Rocky. And Bashing is the part that I feel like is more universal and can work everywhere. So, what do you guys think about the name, the words Bashing and Rocky? Potentially using those as a part of renaming this channel. Do you guys have any ideas? Throw them in chat. Let me know what you think. Could the channel just be called Bashing? Or could it be called Bash Nation? Or Bash Gaming? Or Rocky? Rocky Gaming? Bashing Rocky. Anything that isn't Clash, because Clash, I feel like, limits you to just Clash games. What do you guys think about the name? Let me know in chat if you think any combination of those two elements could work, but I think keeping the bashing is mandatory. That's a really strong branding element now that you've built with your audience. Keep that, and you've got to figure out some name that does not include Clash in it if you want to expand beyond Clash. Game, <laughs> game bashing doesn't make sense. Bash gaming, possibly? Here's the last suggestion about rebranding. Don't just rebrand your channel. Ask your community for ideas. So I'm asking my chat for ideas. Bash gaming is interesting. <laughs> Bash gaming. But maybe you could just ask your channel, hey guys, I'm looking to expand beyond Clash. Here's some name ideas I'm considering. Use your community tab and run a poll. Literally ask your audience. Here's some options I'm thinking about. Give me your ideas in the comments below and you'll get hundreds of responses letting you know what they think could be interesting. Bashing Rocky. Troll, la lol, la 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 You need to work on moving beyond the, the branding of Clash bashing. You have to. So that's my next piece of advice. So that's it for my initial channel review for Clash bashing. 25 minutes of advice, geez. Let's review. Expand beyond just Clash and consider going a super cell game strategy. Continue delivering those five value items I was talking about for all of your content. Continue diversifying your revenue and double down on the strategy consulting for gaming. I think that's a path for you to get significant additional revenue and grow as a professional in a business. And then the fourth option is you've got to ask your audience and brainstorm yourself on how to remove the word clash from your brand name. Keep bashing. Bashing's cool. Remove clash. That's it. <laughs> Channel review over. We'll follow up later, Clash Bashing. We'll be in contact. Bash Gaming would be cool. You guys like Bash Gaming, huh? Zishan, good to see ya. So let me go back up here in chat and read some of your questions. Drop your questions on me in chat here. I'm here. I'm here to help. All right, here we go. Reggie Set Go says, I am doing a perfuming, a perfuming, a perfume channel, and 
Um, should I focus on a local speaking audience natively or a wider international audience? So let me look up your channel right now. Reggie, set, go. So what is your local speaking audience? Here, let's pull up his channel. Looks like you're using a thumbnail template. Correct me if I'm wrong. Looks like a template to me. Looks fine. Um, Arabic audience? Arab traditional, let me know where you're at. But um, as far as scents are concerned, I think that if you did English speaking content and just went global with it, I think that that's probably gonna be the best way to at least test the concept. You've only released four videos that are public right now. So I don't think um, you're prepared to decide which market you're going to go into necessarily. You need to release content in multiple markets, test YouTube, and see what people are going to be interested in. You haven't released anywhere near enough content. You need to release 20 or 30 pieces of content to know what hits and misses are going to be on your channel before you can make decisions like that. Okay? I know that's maybe not the answer you wanted, but go English speaking. Go for wider international via English speaking uh, and, and, and go, go that direction first. Cool. I mean, if we take a look at Google Trends, let's take a look at Google Trends real quick. Let me help you out, Reggie, set, go. And we look at perfume on YouTube. And we take a look at which countries are getting the most interest. Let's take a look, worldwide. I mean, this you should, you should dive through this data if you haven't already and really have a look. Angola, Japan, whoop. Yeah, Angola, Japan, Venezuela, El Salvador, Honduras. I'm not going to read all of these out loud, but it looks like non-English speaking countries are the top markets. Here, I'm just going to link this in chat. Reggie, set, go. You need to dive over these numbers right here for perfume channels and look at where the market truly is. But I would assume that perfume content, if you do English perfume content, possibly, you could reach a larger audience, but I, it looks like L perfume is the number one term here. Yowzers. Take a look through this data on Google Trends. That's my best advice for you and release 20 to 30 videos before you start analyzing which markets you're going to dive into. Cover multiple markets, see which ones hit, and then double down on the hits and eliminate the stinkers. It's really the best way to go, seriously. Beautiful. East West Bay says, I'm a Madden mobile streamer. The game itself is being revamped in two days. Should I branch off into other sports games or just focus on Madden? The other EA games are pretty well covered. That's a good question. Let's take a look. We're going to go to your channel. Um, yay, I'm live. If you guys haven't spoken up in chat yet, speak up with your very specific questions. I'm here to help you. I want to answer as many of your questions as possible. I'm going live more often to help more people. Live three times this week, maybe five. If you guys like it, give me a thumbs up if you are enjoying it. So West East Bay is your channel. That is a puppy. That is you. Great. So your channel right now. Hey, you're like, do you like my video? Thank you. Um, you're covering Madden. Quick stream because you're lazy. That is very, yeah, that's a little bit lazy for sure. Man, your channel's kind of like looking all over the place in terms of your thumbnails. Oh, I see you're streaming from your phone. Ah, yes, I've done that before. Check it out. He's streaming for using the YouTube gaming app. See the little circle here? Oh, he's a little puppy. Can you do a, uh, can you do face cam moving forward? It'd be really good to see your face. The puppy's nice and everything, but seeing your face and being relatable would be much better. Let's take a look. What are, what are, I, I've researched um, EA sports titles many times in terms of mobile gaming and uh, not google.com. We want to go to Google trends and NBA live is definitely big, but it's certainly it's, it's just, it's destroyed really Madden mobile. What are the other ones? Madden mobile. Then there's, um, there's like NBA live mobile or something like that. And what are the other EA titles on mobile? So here's the thing about covering sports games. 
on YouTube. If you don't love those sports games, then you are going to get destroyed. Yeah, NBA Live Mobile, and then there's uh, FIFA Mobile. And it looks like they renamed the Madden title to Madden Overdrive. Is that correct? Yeah, there's a UFC Mobile game. Yeah, there's Madden Mobile. Okay, got it. There's UFC Mobile. Let's just take a look. I'm just taking a look and seeing where the interest is on YouTube. And... Let's have a look at that worldwide interest. This is what you guys should do. You guys see how much I rely on Google Trends? All of you guys should be using Google Trends. Google Trends is your friend. It really is. East, West, let's see what's going on here. Damn, FIFA's crushing it. I assume there's a million FIFA channels out there. Madden is real small. Ooh, gross. Madden is tiny, man. Let's see about United States. I bet United States it's bigger because that American football factor. Let's see, U.S., I bet Madden jumps up in the U.S. Madden is biggest in the U.S., there it is. <laughs> Take a look at that. Um, but it has died recently. Dude, just stick with just stick with Madden. Your channel is too, yeah, I mean, U.S. interest, you're an English-speaking person. Stick with Madden on your channel. You need to improve your thumbnails and your titles, and you need to try to deliver daily content if you can, or as often as possible if you can, content with Madden. So anytime you're playing the game, fire up your YouTube gaming app, and go live. That seems to be the easy way for you to deliver consistently. Just go live playing the new game. Just do it. If that's the easy way for you to make content, then go for it. And it looks like that is. Now, it looks like you're recording using the YouTube mobile app. Certainly there are some equipment recommendations I could make to improve your quality, because it looks like you're having some frame rate issues. And we're gonna move on to the next person's question here in a moment. But I did make the ultimate creator guide. I wanted to give you guys a, a sneak preview on that. Here you go. Ultimate creator gear guide. I've put in about 14 hours into this so far. This is a free resource for you guys to use. And basically these are all of my best equipment recommendations. Having managed multi-million dollar audiovisual inventories and grown studio, built studios from scratch and what have you. And for you, if you really want to increase that mobile gaming uh, quality, uh, one thing that you should definitely consider is picking up an HD60 capture device. I'll go ahead and click that link. I just dropped it in chat. Click the link. It's right here under my streaming, under my Creator Essentials kit for streaming. Pick up the HD60 and then get a uh, video out from your phone into the capture device. Uh, this capture device is 180 bucks. I've got this one. When I did mobile gaming content, I captured through this device. And the HD60S is going to be really, really good for um, is going to be really, really good for you to capture mobile, whether you have a laptop or not. So here is the capture device. I am I'll put that in chat for you here. So that you can basically get your frame rate back on your mobile device because it looks like you're dropping frames because you're recording and you're playing the game at the same time. This capture device, oopsie, this capture device will help you increase that frame rate. And you can plug this thing in via USB, the HD60. You can plug it in via USB um, into any computer. It's, it's USB 3 uh, with an HDMI in and HDMI out. So you can run it out to a monitor. I very, very highly recommend this device for anybody who is doing mobile gaming capture. So anyway, the gear guide is there for you guys to browse through. I'm going to be making some videos with including this gear guide later. Um, if you do have a computer, you can do a capture card more specifically. Uh, a 4K 60 Pro is totally unnecessary. But an HD 60 Pro that I have here in the guide would be useful to you. If you have a desktop computer, pop this bad boy into your computer and it's got um, HDMI inputs so you can run your phone out into your computer and your phone or your iPad or whatever you're using um, can here I'm putting it in chat for you HD 60 Pro so that your phone or your iPad or whatever can uh, use all of its computing power to give you to give you maximum graphics and best frame rate rather than also recording at the same time cool West East Bay I hope that was helpful for you let me see if there's some more questions. You're enjoying the stream, yes, glad to hear that. Let me scroll down chat here. Sorry, I missed a little bit of more recent chat. Um, Andrew, Twitter media and ads isn't available in your country, but you always try to put native content on Twitter, then drive into your channel, cool. 
yeah, maybe the ads aren't available, That, but on Twitter, even if the ads aren't available or Media Studio isn't available, you can natively upload video to Twitter anyway, though. So you don't necessarily, you can't schedule it, but you can just upload it in the moment and drop it on Twitter. That's still an option. Vi live, video, images, those are the top three types of content that Twitter likes, and then text after that. If you can do live or video at the top of that hierarchy, you're going to get better Twitter performance that way. Beautiful. I want to start Shadowgun Legends channel. Any tips, says Shido Fight. Um, by the way, after this, I've got questions I'm going to answer for Echo Gaming. Um, <laughs> T1C3 says, and Elgato Gaming, Gaming gave you one of those capture cards. You traded it. You, uh, you traded a meme for it. Oh my God. That's amazing. Can you link to that, T1C3? You trading a meme for a capture device? That's badass. <laughs> Okay, um, and I'm going to answer your questions here, Gator, in just a minute. All right, Shido Fight wants to know, I want to start a Shadowgun Legends channel, any tips? As you know, I, I did that for a bit, and I, I was getting like 2,000 to 10,000 views per video. If you love Shadowgun Legends, in your heart love Shadowgun Legends, then do a Shadowgun Legends channel, Absolutely. But Shadowgun Legends is not going to be a gigantic game, from what I can tell. Um, just because it's an indie developer. And um, I'm just pulling up uh, Google Trends here to show you the interest right now. It's an indie developer. And they're a wonderful indie developer, and I love them. But that game is not going to be big because they aren't spending the money on marketing that they need to spend to have this game be big on YouTube. So let's take a look at Shadowgun Legends over the past 12 months. As you can see, the game spiked here. And then it more or less plateaued. So in the last, let's say, what is this? Few months, it has already declined by another 30% in terms of interest. But it'll probably just plateau there forever. So Shadowgun Legends maximum, I would say, you'll be able to get maybe a couple hundred thousand views per month on a Shadowgun Legends channel. But So this will be a labor of love. You would make a Shadowgun Legends channel because you love Shadowgun Legends. That's why I was making Shadowgun Legends content. I like It's an indie dev. Indie devs almost never make a game that you can make a living off of on Twitch, on Mixer, on YouTube, on anywhere. So keep that in mind. Okay, so tips for you. Uh, first tip is to get the right equipment to stream that game um, and to be comfortable streaming that game. So I've got... I've got this equipment here in my creator kit. Um, I don't know. I, maybe you guys all got the link there. Here, I'll just link the creator kit one more time. I'm going to go ahead and make a command for future streams. Here's the creator kit. Check it out. But I've got some basics here that you would want uh, in terms of uh, your initial creator equipment. Now, let me know what creator equipment you have. But um, these are the basics that you're going to want. You're going to want the Blue Yeti USB mic bundle right here. It's the best microphone for the money on the market. It's only 200 bucks for the boom stand, the gyro, and the camera. The C920 Logitech webcam is amazing, assuming that you have a good light. And if you're going to be streaming a game like Shadowgun Legends or showing your face on camera, this thing's only 50 bucks right there. And all you have to do is have this desktop LED light that you see. It's the craziest recommendation, I know. This desktop LED light is what I'm using to light myself right now. And I know this is a 720p stream, and I know I look fairly crispy right now. Check it out. This is this is how impactful this desktop lamp is. It's got adjustable height. You can move it like this. Look, see the difference? I just pointed it away from me and pointed it at the wall as opposed to pointing. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Here, let me turn it off. Watch this. This is what I look like without the light on. This is just my two side lights, my newer floor lights, which are in this kit. Um. And then this is what it's like with this lamp on. Just like night and day. So anyway, the desktop lamp plus a webcam, you'll look great. <laughs> like you'll look fantastic on, on stream. So here's the deal. You want to pick up some of that basic equipment. I don't know what computer you have. I have recommended laptops in my gear guide for $1,100. You can get a gangster laptop. I don't know if you want to spend that much money though. Um, you might already have a computer... I don't know if you want to get a production computer. If you do, this one right here that's $1,100 is got an 
six core eighth gen i7 processor, a 1050 Ti graphics card, eight gig of DDR4 RAM, a solid state drive and a storage drive. You can get four USB ports and two external monitors for $1,100. So if you're making a channel just because you love it and you want the right computer to be able to produce equipment, this is the cheapest computer that is super powerful. It is the most value-packed computer in the world for creators, just straight up. That laptop. I'm streaming on a laptop right now, by the way. I will never buy a desktop computer ever again for production. The MSI and Asus laptops are easily way more powerful than you will ever need. Uh, and better for the money, uh, and you can take them on the road, and you can edit in the living room or in your kitchen, and you can take them to E3, and you can take them to that developer's place when they invite you there. These laptops are incredible. So anyway, this is just some gear recommendations, right? So you can look through the guide, but the big part that I, I, I would want to remind you, of course, is the getting a nice capture card. Get an HD60S capture card, this one right here. This capture card is essential. If you want to do streaming, I have some recommendations in the guide as well. So in terms of what kind of content you can make for Shadowgun Legends, we're a little bit later in the game with a game like Shadowgun Legends. There aren't as many new players playing that game. So what are you going to do? Well, what you're going to do <laughs> is you're going to uh, create more advanced content. You're going to talk about new stuff as one of your values. You're going to talk about how you get the best gear as one of your values. And you're going to teach people about the new stuff and how to get best gear. That's probably going to be your uh, unique value that you can bring to a game that's in this later cycle of maturity or getting towards the later cycle of maturity moving forward. Cool? All right. By the way, feel free to share my gear guide. It is 100% free. It is under construction right now. Um, there's, As you can see, there's like leftover slides here at the bottom from like, I didn't even finish it. Here, I should delete these slides. <laughs> like there's leftover slides here. So I was working, I put about 14 hours into this so far and so far so good. And there you go. Here it is. This is the first draft of my gear guide of all my top recommendations of gear on the planet. Feel free to share the link. Like that's cool. I'm going to have this be a live guide that I maintain uh, forever. Cause I, I get questions every single day about what gear to buy. I just need a single live updated cloud-based solution to give people gear advice because <laughs> I spend so much time just manually typing in gear advice to people. Cool. Bam. Uh, Blue Angels is going to be there. You're in a meeting. You'll be here in about 20 minutes. That's cool. Excellent. Um, okay. Gator had a question in chat. Gator. Gator says, I don't know if that's how you talk. You probably don't talk like that, but you know what? I'm going to use that voice anyway for you, Gator. Hey, Gator. Hey, a wall. I got a tech and gaming channel. Ding. Do you think it's best to split into two or to keep it as one channel now? Also, I find it hard to get a hold of tech because you live in Bahrain. Okay, you don't talk like that. <laughs> but I thought it was entertaining. Okay. Tech and gaming, should they be separate? So the question, Gator, as to whether you should separate your tech and your gaming channel is whether that tech and gaming is directly related to each other. So is this like tech you can use for gaming? Are these like the best mouse and keyboards? Are these the best gaming headsets? Are these the best monitors for gamers? Are these the best laptops for gamers? If it's a gaming tech channel, then yes. If it's a general tech channel, then no. Perhaps that could be a niche for you, focusing only on gaming tech. How many gaming tech channels are there? Tech is such a wide vertical. There are so many freaking tech channels. You know that. There are so many. And there are so many brilliant people covering tech. You know that too. Perhaps you should focus on gaming tech specifically. Gaming headsets, gaming keyboards, gaming mice, gaming monitors, gaming computers, right? Even gaming chairs, gaming USB headphones, gaming everything, gunners, I don't know, VR. Maybe that could be an interesting niche for you. You gotta go niche when you do gaming content though. Let me take a look at your channel here, Gator. 
Gator. Gator Tech now. Like, he just straight up doesn't talk like that. Now, let's see. Ga gator. Gator Tech and gaming now. It's just the word gator. I, li I grew up in Jacksonville, Florida, so um, lots of people saying gator. Just like that. Um, given that your channel doesn't have that much traction yet, I see you're doing WoW Legion content plus tech on top of that. Here's what I would say. Do gaming on your channel. It's just an interesting idea. I just, I'm taking a look at your channel out of freaking nowhere. So <laughs> I haven't done deep research on your channel yet. But here's an interesting idea for you. You make the gaming content, like this WoW vanilla whatever video you have here, to share your credibility as a gamer. People come to your channel because you're obviously a gamer. You know what you're doing in terms of gaming. Then you do reviews of gaming products after that, and people trust you because they know you're a real gamer. I think that that could be interesting. Reviewing game controllers, reviewing consoles, all that stuff. Gaming tech as a niche. Try it. That would be my advice to you. That was the thing that jumped out to me. But doing a separate gaming channel and tech channel, do you have the time to support your two YouTube channels? To do it effectively, it takes forever. Like so much time, man. I see your Amazon affiliate. You're with Freedom Network. Are you with Lethal Network? Interesting. Okay. Anyway, that's my advice to you. Gaming tech. <laughs> Definitely don't put them on the same channel. Don't do general tech and general gaming on the same channel. Absolutely do not do that. If you guys are enjoying this live stream, be sure to slap that like button. Sparta kick that like button. Do it. All right. Let's see if we got some other questions here. Thank you for helping Echo get sponsors. He's already at 35 sponsors. Awesome. Glad to hear that. What's up? I'm here to help my patrons. Holy crap. I was supposed to... Um, I was supposed to answer some questions here from Echo. Let's answer Echo Gaming's questions. Another patron of mine. If you guys are not already aware... There's a link at the top of the description below. If you become my patron, I will do mini channel reviews for you as an insider. Or if you'd like one-on-one -on -one coaching, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with creators as well. This launched a couple weeks ago. I've been doing this for a living for seven years as a network, as a person working for a network and co-founding the network. I've got this Patreon now. It is my pleasure to have eight patrons right now. Clash Bashing just joined. If you are interested in getting me to help you more directly, feel free to check out my Patreon. I'm happy to help you more directly. Lots of direct messages with you guys, private content for you guys, one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching for you guys. This is a journey to go on, and uh, I, you know, <laughs> I have a ton of experience. I've helped thousands of creators grow and uh, do what they do uh, every single day. So there you go. Patreon plug over. You guys already know about my Patreon. Speaking of Patreon, let's talk about Echo Gaming. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I'm trying to combine servicing my patrons in these streams with just answering random questions from people that aren't my patrons yet. Is it going well? Let me know. I want to go live more often and do that more often. That's what I'm trying to do. I want to help. Like, I don't, I don't like the idea of people having, having to pay me money for me to help them through a live stream. All my content's free, but you shouldn't have to pay me money. Uh, so I want to I want to answer more questions during the live streams. That's what I'm trying to say. Let me get some coffee. Then we're gonna answer some questions about diversifying to multiple platforms: YouTube to Twitch, YouTube to Mixer, YouTube to other platforms. What should you do? Echo Gaming sent me a very thoughtful question about his channel, wondering about a few things. I'm gonna read some of his question, and we're gonna discuss the strategy behind that question. Wow. You tag me on Twitter, Nightbot doesn't like links. Okay, I'll turn that off later. Pesh Plays, good to see you in chat. Zishan, good to see you as well. Zishan, good to see you. Echo time. Oh yeah, I didn't live stream last week. Thanks for asking about my trip, what's up? I saw family last week, that's why I didn't live stream. It was great. I saw my dad, I saw my brother, saw my sister, saw my uncle, saw my cousin, saw everybody. It was wonderful. It was so good to see family. So thanks for asking. Appreciate that.
All right, another Clash channel. So many of you Clash community members. Oh God, look at those sexy thumbnails. They're so nice. Oh my God, they're so good. Okay, let's pull up his channel. Okay, take a look at these sexy thumbnails just real quick though. This isn't the question, but he's got, God, this look good. Like this one right here, oh, 3,000 views too while he's at it. Nicely done. What you wanna do is avoid those 1K views, which a lot of those are your live streams, but man, they look so hot. Look at that, he's taking, taking my advice. High contrast, Commun communicating clear value. Here's what's happening with Echo. Echo, I'm gonna keep it 100 with you, amigo. He sent me some questions about his channel. Uh, you know, some of his videos didn't perform very well, much less than normal. And he took a bad dip for a couple days. I understand. I get that message all the time. So many people message me about taking a dip on their channel. Should I change stuff? Should, am I doing something wrong? Okay. First of all, I'll answer that question. If you see a dip for a couple days on your channel, did you do something wrong? Do not take what happened over a couple days as being the trend on your channel. If you're trying a new strategy, try it for 60 days before you change your strategy. Don't let a couple days of disappointment change your mind. I know how tempting that is to do that, but you have to resist. Continue taking my advice, Echo. Can continue making these killer thumbnails. Look at these thumbnails. They're so good. New, learning. You're just delivering value. Deliver value like this over and over again, and you will continue to see growth and results. 3,000, 3,000. Look at all that value. Keep delivering value like this. By the way, your trap show thumbnails don't talk about value. What's the value of this? I don't see the value of this thumbnail. It's a character and a bunch of people on the thumbnail. You need to communicate value. If Clash of Clans meets Brawl Stars is the value, what are, you, what are you really talking about? What's the value of watching this live stream? It's not communicated through the thumbnail. Value, value, no value. Hard to read text on these thumbnails. And again, it's not popular in English language. I know you're like Identity 5 right now. You, put, you need to look at another game, dude. You need to look at another game other than Identity 5. It's clearly not doing that well on your channel. I mean, you could test it for another 30 days and see what's up. You do have this new player guide here. You did take my advice on new player guide and that is getting some views. But, I don't know. This one got 2,000 views. Oh my God, you took the new player guide advice and look, it got 5,000 views. Uh-oh, he took my advice on how to cover a new game by making new player guides. I didn't catch these videos last week. You did the new player guides and it worked. Keep making new player guides. Don't listen to me. Keep making new player guides. Keep doing what I told you originally. <laughs> it's working. It's working. Get 10,000 views a pop off of those. But anyway, Identity 5, not big in English language. So these new player guides are going to be the maximum amount of views that you can get on that type of content. Relia, hey, hey, good to catch me live. Great to see you in chat. Luis Acosta, speaking of money, is there such thing as asking for Patreon bits and other donations too early? All right, I'll answer that question, then I'll get back to the rest of Echo Gaming's questions. It's never too early to ask for money for your channel. As long as you're serving people first, then there's you're asking for money in return for that service. I switched over to YouTube advice content from gaming content on my channel. Did I say, you know what, I'm going to wait six months. I'm going to wait three months. I'm worried about asking for money. No, I asked for money right out the gate. Because you know why? I need the money to do this. And so do you. So does everybody else. So no. It's okay to, uh, what's the phrase that Pat Flynn uses? It's okay to serve and sell at the exact same time. Because you know what? Without the revenue, you can't serve. So no. Day one, ask for tips. Ask for donations. Ask for support. Assuming that you're delivering value when you ask for their support. And an example of that would be my Patreon. I'm not just asking for $25 because you love me. I'm going to be giving you nonstop advice. 
I'm going to be giving you exclusive content. I'm going to be talking with you guys regularly. I'm going to be following up with you and making sure that you're successful as long as you're my patron, right? I'm delivering value, one-on-one coaching sessions, blah, 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 blah. I'm delivering value in exchange for cash. That's how the world works. There's time and there's money. And if you want somebody to spend time on you, you need to give them money. That's just the way the world is. That's not bad. (laughs) That's good. So long story short, it's okay to ask for money. In fact, I encourage asking for money, assuming that you're serving your audience and you're not just being a scumbag and being like, oh, I need help because I'm so sad and like so dramatic and I'm just not doing well. Serve first, then sell. But it's okay to serve and sell at the same time, as long as the serve part is there. Make sense? Cool. More questions from Echo Gaming. In the past two days, my video, we already know that. So, you've been watching other people, and other people are going to other platforms like Mixer and Twitch and what have you, and is it hurting your channel? This is a question for anybody out there. Does it hurt your channel to stream and release videos on your channel at the same time? It's a fantastic question, and I know the answer. The answer is yes and no. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is a yes and no question. So a yes and no answer. So some of the stuff on his channel is one hour live streams and the rest of it's all videos. Are these live streams destroying the videos because they're there? Let me share with you a channel that I helped build with my team called TGN Squadron. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. We're like the official channel of like for Blizzard's uh, Heroes of the Storm community, what have you. And this channel is mostly live, but then we release videos on the weekends as well. Live, 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 video, video. Live, 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 video, video, etc. And the bottom line is this. When you go live, that's going to generate significant new revenue opportunities for you. So it's going to grow your financial goals. When you release videos, it's more or less going to only serve your audience growth goals. So where is your priority? Is it on audience growth or is it on financial goals? Or do you need a combination of both? If you need a combination of both, I recommend streaming and releasing videos on, the, on your channel at the same time. If you only want the money, then I recommend going live all the time. Live is going to make you more money. It just is. And somebody like you is going to make, you're going to make way more money through live. If you're pushing sponsor goals, super chat goals, building community, et cetera. So where are your goals? Now, other people are like, I'm going to go stream on Mixer, and I'm going to go stream on Twitch, and I'm going to go take over the world with these other platforms because the grass is always greener on the other platform, right? If you already have traction on YouTube, do not move over to another platform until you're big, real big, because then you have an audience to move over to diversify. You need to do audience growth on YouTube first before you can transfer over to a platform like Mixer or like Twitch and be successful at it. So you're too small, Echo Gaming, to do that. You do the star. Clash Bashing, he's getting towards being big enough to be able to do it. My other patron, m and TV, they are big enough to do it. They're big enough to move to another platform and diversify. You just aren't large enough. You don't have a large enough audience that'll go with you. So don't do it. See, when you're on Mixer and you're on Twitch, Those platforms don't really grow your channel that much unless you're live all the time. You don't have time for that. You have a full-time job. You're a teacher. You can't do that. You are not going to be able to run an effective mixer or Twitch strategy right now. So therefore, YouTube is the best platform for you because you can live stream and you can release videos on your time as somebody who has to work a full-time job. Hope that answers your question. Oh, and another point there for you is... YouTube's algorithm suggests videos to videos and live streams to live streams, but it does suggest live streams to videos less and videos to live streams less. Does that make sense? So those two types of content are compatible on one channel, but they're less compatible than having all videos and all live. Make sense? Cool. Um, the other part that I wanted to bring up for you is what I told your boy earlier. And by your boy, I'm talking about clash bashing. I think that you should consider when you're talking about diversifying into other games, the 80-20 split and what have you, 
consider becoming a Supercell Games channel. Very seriously consider that. Um, I think the Supercell Games direction could be very interesting for you to look at Clash Royale, to look at uh, upcoming big Supercell games. I feel like there's a lot of audience crossover there for you. And a Supercell-based strategy could be interesting. You're getting some traction right now with Identity 5. I don't know if that game has longevity. We do know Supercell has longevity, though. We know Brawl Stars probably will be a success, but they need to fix it. And we know that Clash Royale is a success right now. So I think you expanding into Supercell games as a category is probably safer than you just doing random games like Identity 5 out of nowhere. But you know what? If you love Identity 5 in your heart, use the 80-20 rule. 80% your main content, 20% the new content, and go for it. But I think expanding into a Supercell games channel is an opportunity for both Clash Bashing and you to do. There is enough interest out there to be able to do that and for multiple channels to be able to do that and collaborate with each other. I hope that was helpful. Beautiful. Um, all righty then. I am going to take a few more questions. And then we are going to call the live stream there. And don't worry, friends. We have plenty more live streams coming up this week. As you can see, I've got upcoming live streams. You can click this link right here. I'm dropping in chat. You can go to the top of my channel. You can click this Google button right here to see my upcoming live streams. It'll pull them up like right here. And you'll see all my upcoming live streams when you click that Google button. All right. I've got one this Wednesday at the same time. And I've got one this Friday at the same time. We're going live all the time. And if you go to the top of my channel, I will always list my upcoming live streams up here. So you'll be able to catch them here. Okay. I hope you guys are enjoying these live streams. A couple more questions and we're going to call it. Okay. For today. Be sure to enable notifications on my channel if you want to catch more live streams moving forward, okay? All right. Um, Relye asks, how long will YouTube gaming tutorials get views and subs if done well when it, done for a big game like Zelda Breath of the Wild? Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. That kind of game is different. <laughs> Zelda Breath of the Wild is not a multiplayer online game, right? So... For multiplayer online games, tutorials will get views as long as the game exists because there will always be new players wanting to join the game. For Zelda Breath of the Wild, it's going to significantly decline after launch. Big time going to decline after launch. So I'd say that that type of content will get big views for the first three months post-launch. And you can get decent views for the first year post-launch. And then after that, there isn't going to be big views to be had. However, if you cover something like Breath of the Wild, and um, if you guys aren't familiar with that, it's the latest Zelda game. Um, a year or more after launch, almost nobody else is making guides around that, right? So that could be interesting because uh, YouTube rewards content that has recency. So if you're releasing new player guides a year after a game came out and nobody else is releasing new player guides, that's an opportunity for you to get market share for a game. Um, and uh, nobody else is taking advantage of that. So you don't have to compete with the big guys in that scenario. I'm loading up Google Trends right now for Breath of the Wild. You know what? This is decent. The game launched, uh, we got had max interest in January 6, 2018. Am I missing something here? It's really doing well. Are you kidding me? No way. Now let me see. Huh. Oops. You know what? This particular trend might be interesting. Looks like there's like a little content update or something. So here's launch. And then, I don't know. I feel like you could get decent views over time on this game. It's going to continue to decline. This is definitely a dying trend for sure. Uh, but if you are trying to grow your channel, I think that you can you can make guides around this game and they will get long-term views because the competition is lower right now for the game. So, yes, you can make guides for a game after it launches. Th up to three months after it launches. Between six to nine months after it launches, it'll be super saturated. A year or more after a game launches, if you make guides, you can get big views on those guides and you can get suggested views off those guides. 
it can be interesting for you. You're basically picking up the leftovers of the game on YouTube, and that's okay. That's a good business strategy. You get the leftovers around a topic, the leftover interest around a topic, you use that to grow your channel, and you can cover new big topics when they come out in the future, right? That can totally work. All righty. Oh, wow, there's so many questions. I don't, I, uh, I'm not doing a super long live stream today, so uh, let me see if I can answer some here. Blue Angels Gaming, I need to make sure to answer one of your questions, at least the DLC where the spikes got it. Okay. Um, where would you recommend sharing videos to gain an audience? I use good Clash of Clans Reddit page. Any other good sources? Yes, there are good sources. So Clash of Clans, yes, or Reddit is good, of course. Um, I also think that uh, Twitter is probably the best avenue to promote, in air quotes, your videos. Uh, I've got a playlist on my channel. You can go check it out right now, where I advise primarily right now on Twitter and on um, Reddit strategy. Reddit is the number one location to get views on through a subreddit, assuming that you provide value. So here is uh, my how to grow grow on Reddit strategy. I got a million views on one video on Reddit, so that's pretty sick. And then I also have a how to grow on Twitter strategy as I close my YouTube channel that made it really difficult for me to actually pull up the information for you, so that's sweet. And then I've got a how to grow on Twitter strategy as well that you can consider. And that is all about posting native video to Twitter and using native's priority uh, on Twitter for video to grow your uh, your attention. But here's, here's what I'd say. Like when you post on Twitter and you post on these other avenues, just realize the trend over time other than Reddit is for all of these platforms to want to get more traction on their own platform, not to send traffic to YouTube. So you can't think about these other avenues in a way where you're using it to promote your YouTube channel. You have to think about it totally differently. You have to think about these avenues as I'm growing my audience on different platforms, not I'm gonna funnel audience to YouTube. Twitter's algorithm punishes external links. Facebook's algorithm punishes external links. Um, Snapchat and Instagram almost make it impossible to have external links. So just promoting on other avenues is just not, a, it's not a real strategy. Posting native content on a platform for people to enjoy on that platform, that's a real strategy. So Reddit, you can do that if you build your clout with a particular subreddit. I've got a whole video about that. Pay it forward. I use the 20, one, 20 to 1 rule on Reddit. 20 posts giving value to an audience to every one post where you're promoting yourself. And then on Twitter, you want to post native videos under 2 minutes and 20 seconds that in the actual video post, you click it and then it links back to your YouTube channel. Like in the actual video player, it does that. Those are the two strategies that work. Outside of that, if you're using Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, any of these other social avenues, you can create a piece of original content for that avenue. And then you can say, if you want to check out my live stream about this and I'll answer all your questions, go to YouTube. Or I made an entire video about this, diving into this one piece of the concept. I'll only cover it a little bit here. Go to my YouTube channel, it's in there. Like you can say, go there to get unique value that adds on to what you're saying on a social avenue, but just saying post, go to YouTube, it just flat out doesn't work and it will work less and less over time. Short video clips on Twitter, how much they cost? They cost $0. Each time you try to do that, it costs money for short video ads. No, it doesn't. It does not cost money to do it. It's free. It's just absolutely free, Blue Angels Gaming. People are, maybe I should make a video about that. People were messaging me and they think it costs money to post videos on Twitter. It does not cost any money. It's absolutely free. Through Media Studio, it is absolutely free. Here, I'm gonna go into my account right now. Watch this. Hopefully it doesn't show like my account number or something. Let me make sure I'm not showing you any. Okay, check this out. I'm here in my Media Studio in Twitter, just like my video shows you. I am running Twitter ads, but I don't have to run Twitter ads. I'm paying like 13 cents a day or something. I, I don't have to have Twitter ads 
to, I don't have to be paying for Twitter ads to post videos on Twitter. You just upload your media to Twitter the way I suggested, like this Patreon video. Then you hit tweet. Do you see anything requiring me to pay money? Make sure you don't have promoted only clicked. Type in your tweet and then literally hit tweet. There's no money. It's, it's not going to charge me any money. It's 100% it's free to do this through Twitter Media Studio. 100% free. There's no cost. If you select promote it only, then sure there's cost. You're paying money to promote it. But no, it's just free. 100% free. So posting videos on Twitter, like the way I said in my video, costs $0. Now Twitter will ask you for your credit card number. So? Everybody asks you for your credit card number. Just give them your credit card number and then never pay them any money. And then use this service for free. Cool? Sorry for the confusion. Oh, no, it's okay. There's, there, you don't need to apologize. I'm just explaining that not only for you, but for everybody else as well. No worries, no worries. Devidra Geek, I'm sorry you're showing up at the end of the live stream. Guys, I'm going to call the live stream right there. We are doing more live streams on the channel, like I said earlier. So what you can do is um, you can go to my channel, make sure you subscribe and enable notifications, and you click home, or you click the G button up in the top here, and you will see all of my upcoming live streams, okay? They're all going to be listed right here at the top of my channel. We're going again on Wednesday. We're going again on Friday. And I'm here to help all of you. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this live stream, give it a thumbs up. And I appreciate all of your questions. And we will have more discussions in the future. Uh, thank you to all of my patrons for your wonderful support. You are the reason why I'm able to commit even more time to doing this now. And doing multiple streams per week. Because you guys are supporting me financially. That's enabling me to help more people. So thank you. I appreciate my patrons. Have a great day. Keep creating content. Know your value on YouTube and communicate that value clearly and you will win. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next live stream. Let's keep working together to grow your channel. Adios.